The episode kicks off at Momo's place where the gang's busy slurping noodles. Sounds peaceful, right? Well, it's anything but. A conversation starts between Momo and Ira that's equal parts hilarious and chaotic. Momo bluntly asks Ira if her hatred stems from the infamous washed up incident, offering a rare apology. But Ira's got bigger beef. She's convinced Momo's a demon. Momo denies it furiously, but things escalate when Ira accuses Okaran of being a demon too. Even Momo's grandma chimes in, switching sides faster than a sports fan at a playoff game, claiming, yeah, Momo's totally a demon. Yeah. Why? Because in Ira's eyes, Gran was far too pretty and way too young. Ira vows to grow stronger and beat Momo, who welcomes the challenge. Before leaving, Ira dramatically declares herself humanity's savior because she's just too cute. Grandma, of course, cheers her on, further frustrating Momo, who can't believe her own grandma is rooting for the enemy. Once Ira storms out, the group gets back to business, installing Okan's long lost testicle. Yup, you heard that right. And who's in charge? Turbo Granny. But instead of keeping things simple, she turns the procedure into a base. Ball match. Turbo Granny's pitching, Okaron's catching, not in the way you think, Grandma's batting, and Momo's the referee. Grandma taunts Turbo Granny, but when the golden ball is pitched, Grandma misses, and bam, the ball hits Okaron right in the, well, you can guess. So Okaron awkwardly starts hopping around, clutching in pain. After much chaos, they finally confirm. Victory all around, kind of. Cut to the next day at school, Momo and Okaron share an awkwardly hallway conversation. She suggests researching occult forms for clues about the second ball, but Okaron admits he doesn't even own a computer. Then as they part ways, Momo asks him to meet on the rooftop during lunch, but Okarun declines, saying he'd like to work on a report during lunch. Undeterred, she then suggests visiting an internet cafe after school, but he turns her down again, claiming he has plans. Later, during lunch, Momo suspicious that Okarun is hiding something, finds herself unable to shake the uneasy feeling. Struggling to clear her thoughts, she steps out to buy a drink, but as she heads back to class, she's hit with a jaw-dropping sigh. Okarun on top of Ira, both sweating, looking like they were, ahem, <clears throat> busy. Turns out, the truth is far less scary. Okaru's been on a self-improvement spree, working out to get stronger and protect Momo, but Ira shows up, misreading every signal like a rom-com protagonist. She dramatically declares her feelings for him, claiming, when you confess, you have to kiss. She even cites a sketchy R18 romance manual as her source. Okaru tries to defuse the situation, but Ira insists. A comedic tussle ensues, leading to the awkward position Momo witnessed. Back to Momo, she's fuming, she drops her friend's drink, Pompey Orange, in shock and storms off. Too furious to even process Okarun's explanations. Later in class, she channels her frustration into an internal monologue and also talking to a mantis shrimp. Her friends convinced she is possessed. Okarun, still determined to get stronger, juggles studying and working out in class. He reflects on his mistakes and resolves to become someone Momo can rely on. But before he can finish his dramatic monologue, everything around him goes haywire. The classroom plunges into darkness and outside it's pitch black. Meanwhile, Momo's trapped in another part of the school, surrounded by rising water. As she tries to figure out what's going on, she hears something, a creature lurking in the shadows. Its glowing stripes and menacing presence are enough to make anyone freeze. When it shoots a devastating beam attack, Momo barely avoids it, hiding in a classroom. She whispers to herself, damn it, where's Okarun? Her frustration and worry are palpable. Back to Okarun, he finds Ira and together they try to figure out what's happening. It's eerily similar to the alien attack from episode 2, but this time it's worse. An alien-like creature appears, babbling nonsense like a malfunctioning translator. The creature is humanoid with boxing gloves for hands, and it wastes no time attacking. Okarun transforms just in time, shielding Ira and preparing for battle. Out of nowhere, the alien trio from episode 1 crashes into the scene, quickly undoing Okarun's transformation. They zero in on his junk, much to Okarun's confusion and frustration as he shouts, why is everyone after my junk? The aliens smugly reply that it's special, making Okarun even more nervous. Just when they are about to turn him into a doll, Ira steps in. With a swift move, she transforms, using acrobatic silky powers to save Okarun from their grass. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.